Hello and welcome to Jazz Guitar Chord Melody Part 32. Hi, I'm Mike Hayes and today we'll be continuing the theme that's been running right through this whole series and that is that music is about movement. And today our focus will be on creating movement within the framework of the major chord. So we'll be adding some new exciting ideas to your sonic toolbox. But before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on all the good stuff. Okay, grab your guitar and let's get started. As we know from previous sessions, the diminished seventh chord is really a remarkable chord because of all the harmonic possibilities that orbit around it. Remember how we discovered that if we lowered any note of a diminished seventh chord, it would produce a dominant seventh chord. And we also discovered that if we raised any note of a diminished seventh chord, we would end up with a minor sixth chord. Well, if that wasn't enough value out of the diminished seventh chord, hang on to your plectrum, because there's more. In today's session, we're going to be looking at ways of creating major sixth movement. And therefore, it might seem a little bit odd when I start off this session talking about diminished seventh chords. But as you'll see, as the lesson progresses, the diminished seventh chord will play a large part in creating interesting chord movement. OK, here's the concept. Raise or lower any two consecutive notes of a diminished seventh chord and you will have a major sixth chord. So there you have it. The diminished seventh chord strikes again. As you can see, it's always full of surprises. Now I'll walk you through the process step by step because it's not as easy to see when you're just looking at a guitar fretboard. So let's go through the concept step by step. For our example, I'll be using the C diminished seventh chord. The first step is to identify the notes in a C diminished seventh chord. The notes are C, E flat, G flat, A. Now technically the A is a B double flat. However, for our example, I'll be identifying the note as A. OK, do you remember the rule? Raise or lower two consecutive notes of the diminished seventh chord. So now I'll go through the combinations of consecutive notes. C and E flat, E flat and G flat, G flat and A, A and C. Now at the top of the screen you'll see a C diminished seventh chord shape with the notes indicated. As we go through and move various pairs of notes, a new chord shape will appear on the bottom part of the screen. And this will be the major sixth chord that is produced by moving these pairs of consecutive notes. OK, let's get started. If I take the C diminished seventh shape and lower the notes C and E flat, it will produce a D major sixth chord. If I go back to the C diminished seventh chord, and this time lower the E flat and G flat, we will find that it produces an F sixth chord. Back to our diminished seventh shape. If we lower the G flat and A, it will produce an A flat sixth chord. 
once more back to the diminished seventh shape and if we lower the notes A and C you will find it produces a B sixth chord. Right then back to our friend the diminished seventh chord and this time we're going to raise the pairs of consecutive notes. If we raise the C and E flat it will produce an A major 6th chord. If we raise the E flat and G flat, it will produce a C 6th chord. If we raise the notes G flat and A, it will produce an E flat 6th. And if we raise the notes A and C, it will produce a G flat 6th. All very interesting you might say, but what has this got to do with movement on a major 6th chord? Well, I hope you're sitting down because this is where the magic happens. This one C diminished chord can be used to connect 8 major 6th chords. For example, if I wanted to move from an E flat 6 to a B 6, I could use a C diminish to connect the two chords. In fact, you can create movement from any of these major six chords that you see on the screen. You can connect any of them with the C diminish chord. Okay, here's an example of just one of the ways you could apply this information to a solo guitar piece. Let's say we had two bars of C major. Now I could use this concept to create some artificial action. You'll notice in the example I'm going to start on C major 6th and finish on C major 6th. But I'm moving from one major 6th chord to another by way of the C diminished chord. And I can move to any of these major 6th chords that we have on the screen. And the choices you make will depend on the song and the type of sound you want to create. Here goes. Well there you go folks, I hope that's been of interest to you. We'll be covering this subject in greater detail in future lessons, but in the meantime if you have any questions or comments, don't forget to put them in the comments section below the video. And as always, I look forward to catching up with you again next time. Bye for now.